let's talk about DNA. So you probably got some taste of explanation of DNA in high school somewhere along the line or in other classes. Um, DNA is the, it's the double helix. Okay, it's a twisted ladder, if you will. So if you think of a ladder with the hand parts on the side and the steps in the middle, that's a lot like what DNA is. But then you have to think that it's plastic and you twist it a little. And uh, that's pretty much what DNA is. Now, DNA has three parts to it. So you see on these outer rungs of the ladder, you have these purple regions. These are called deoxyribose sugar regions. Okay. And then you have these light blue regions. These are called phosphate regions. And then on the inside, where the steps, you have these nitrogenous bases. Okay? Now, these have multiple names. Nitrogenous bases. Sometimes they're called bases. Sometimes they're called base pairs. It's because they're always paired up together. And sometimes they're simply called nucleotides. Okay? Now, technically, a nucleotide single nucleotide is made up of one nitrogenous base, one phosphate group, and one sugar group. So this right here is technically a nu nucleotide. But for the purpose of this class, and what you see in textbooks a lot, since the sugar and phosphate groups are arguably a bit more boring than the steps, people just refer to these bases as nucleotides. And that's what we're going to do in this class. I'm going to use that phrase, nucleotides, to refer to these A's, T's, C's, and G's, these building blocks of life. Now, I don't care that you ever know the actual names of these. Um, I will always refer them to just A's, T's, C's, and G's. Now, when the hunt was on to try to figure out the shape of this molecule, Linus Pauling was actually working on his second Nobel Prize, and Crick and Watson were trying to figure out what was going on. One of the pieces of the puzzle that helped Crick and Watson figure it out was they would grind up DNA in cells from various organisms, from flies to rats to humans. And what they found that was amazing, they always found the same amount of A as T and the same amount of C as G. It turns out that was the kicker to help them figure out the structure. Because what happens is A always pairs with T and C with G. And once they figured that out, they figured out it had to be a sequence like this with these base pairs in the center of DNA. And that conclusion, with some help from Rosalind Franklin, who helped to isolate the structure as well, um, was enough for them to be awarded the Nobel Prize. So that's DNA, A's, T's, C's, and G's, a bunch of nucleotides.